May I uh, now request uh, Ambassador Lakshmi Puri to make her presentation? It is indeed a pleasure and a privilege for me to join this uh, very timely seminar on engendering nuclear disarmament and to be in the company of what I would say the Maharathis of the peace and security world, the disarmament world, um, and uh, to, you know, as you said, to bring some focus on uh, in Meenakshi ji uh, in your very eloquent and comprehensive uh, uh, presentation on the engendering of uh, disarmament and the quest for peace. Um, let me focus, as you demanded that I should, on the roads less traveled and not fully explored. And also, uh, let me, of course, thank Manpreet Setiji and uh, you for inviting me to share my perspectives from the vantage point of having pushed for the vision and mission uh, of gender mainstreaming, of disarmament, uh, as w UN Women Assistant Secretary General and Deputy Executive Director in charge of intergovernmental norm setting, uh, UN system coordination, as well as strategic partnerships with uh, civil society and uh, women's movement for its seven inceptional years. Firstly, UN Women's Knowledge Hub and Advocacy Role has focused on the evidence for why, what, and how of gender mainstreaming of disarmament space, along with other organizations like UN uh, ODA. Um, and um, I would also like to refer to uh, the very important points made by our uh, dear friend and, and of course, uh, a very tall uh, um, uh, expert and, and leader in disarmament, Jayant Prasad, on um, how difficult it has been to make that case, despite evidence that there is a differentiated and a disproportionate impact on women of weapons, nuclear weapons included, and other D uh, WMDs. Uh, and uh, yet, there is, uh, there is a, the whole community, the disarmament community, and <laughs> the weapons community is in denial. So this has been the first important role, to create the knowledge base for uh, getting recognition for the need for gender mainstreaming. And um, like the cause for disarmament itself, it has been fraught with lack of political will and much skepticism, which we sought to dispel through in-depth diagnosis of the gendered impact of weapons and of disarmament treaties, policies, or programs in all areas and at all levels. Secondly, the WMDs, especially nuclear, may appear gender neutral, but I think, uh, again, as uh, uh, Jayanji has pointed out, it is known to have a differentiated and different, uh, disproportionate impact due to biological, sociological, economic differences, power inequalities, cultural expectations, divisions of labor and family reproduction, and how women mobilize for peace and disarmament. We have advocated for women's concerns and experiences to be made an integral uh, part of the evaluation. And I think uh, Ambassador Prasad referred to measurement, measurement evaluation of disarmament treaties, policies, and its implementation so that men and women benefit equally. 
and women are not disadvantaged. We call for gender policies to be implemented and institutionalized and I entirely agree with you that we, um, Ambassador Prasad, that we do need to uh, address the issue of institutions. Institutionalized with concrete mechanisms, budgets, monitoring and accountability in related foreign defense and security establishments. We have also stressed that women's voice, participation and leadership in decision making on arming and disarmament at all levels and all aspects from the strategic to technical be ensured. So we drew upon, of course, the glorious examples of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, and I was talking to another uh, uh, expert and leader in disarmament, uh, Shil Khan Sharma, Ambassador Shil Khan Sharma, and he, of course, recalled to me how Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, uh, a woman leader, led the push on the cause of nuclear disarmament and ban on nuclear weapons test within the United Nations. De declared NAM history's biggest peace movement and took the Six Nations initiative with considerable impact. We also, of course, cited her example as a role model, but also Nobel Prize winning Alba Myrdal, or as you referred Meenakshi Ji to Greenham Commons and other women protest and peace movements as exemplar exemplars and some of them are still continuing. But, as we all know, uh, the, the disarmament women's movement as much as the larger disarmament movement at the popular level, as uh, someone mentioned, <laughs> I was talking to Kanika, is comatose. So, I must say that we have had limited success in reigniting that uh, that uh, the the women's movement for peace and disarmament uh, in the same way that they have played a role in the past as engines of public opinion building for disarmament. We have worked in strategic partnerships with women's organizations at all levels, global, regional, and national, to highlight their agency and leadership, past, present, and the potential to drive governments towards multilaterally negotiated, and this is the critical point, multilaterally negotiated and monitored general and complete disarmament in WMTs, especially nuclear. Now, in its UN sy system coordination role, UN Women was able to draw uh, UNODA, into joining the SWAP, that is System-Wide Action Plan for Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Accountability. UNODA adopted a gender policy, both to guide its programs and support to governments, and has been commended for, uh, uh, for setting out a transformative objectives on gender responsive peace, and that's the term, gender responsive peace, because I think the term engendering can creates confusion, uh, though I had uh, very much coined it, engendering trade, engendering different sectors. But um, so gender mainstreaming or gender responsive uh, object, uh, peace, security, and disarmament processes. The other um, aspect that was most significant were the strides we were able to make in advancing the gender mainstreaming of disarmament related global norms and standards on WMD, nuclear and other weapons and bring disarmament focus in the gender equality, women's empowerment and women peace and security agenda. Uh, we successfully advocated for gender provisions and multilateral disarmament treaties and I think some of the uh, ambassadors here uh, from India also supported that. 
the Arms Control Treaty of 2013, the Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons 2017, and on Cluster Munitions 2018. We use the motherboard, what I call the motherboard of gender equality and women's empowerment related norms, resolutions, agreements to make the case for engendering disarmament norms and standards. So we drew upon CEDO, the foundational treaty signed by 187 countries and the CEDO committee was supported to come out with a recommendation on women, peace and security in 2013, which triangled, if I will say, <laughs> triangled the uh, a triangle between the uh, triangle, the circle between gender equality, women's empowerment, women, peace and security and disarmament and demanded that states follow an integrated approach. Because as we have seen, women, peace and security has, and I'm going to come to that in a minute, has been somehow seen separately uh, from the disarmament process for some, uh, some time uh, and, and more focused on the micro aspects of conflict states, deal, uh, disarmament in terms of you know, disarming the conflicting parties, etc. UN Women supported 20-year review of global, regional, and national levels of the Beijing Platform for Action, uh, Declaration and Platform for Action 1995, which is still a gold standard, considered a gold standard on, on women's rights and highlighted particularly Para 28, which states, take positive steps to ensure peace for the advancement of women and recognizing the leading role that women have played in the peace movement. We work actively towards general and complete disarmament under strict and effective international control and support negotiations on the conclusion without delay of a universal and multilaterally and effectively verifiable comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty which contributes to nuclear disarmament and the prevention of the proliferation of nuclear weapons in all its aspects. So, uh, most important was to also gender mainstream the UNGA first committee resolutions on disarmament, including on WMDs. By now, 19 out of 61 of uh, these resolutions have women or gender references as against three when we started, while seeking dedicated resolutions on women's role. And the landmark UN General Assembly resolution, I think Minakshi Ji, you referred to it, uh, 6569 on women disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control in 2010, kicked off the campaign to challenge the international disarmament community to achieve women's equal, full and effective participation in all disarmament and security decision making. But in 2012, it was inscribed as a sub-item under general and complete disarmament and we ensured thereafter that a dedicated resolution was passed in the UNGA on this almost every year since and uh, SG reports therefore uh, presented. Similarly, in the UNSC consideration of resolutions, PRSTs uh, on women, peace and security, disarmament was recognized not only as a mechanism for conflict prevention, peacemaking, keeping and building at the micro level in conflict countries, but with some effort also disarmament and arms control was also seen as intersecting with the four pillars of the women, peace and security agenda on participation, protection, prevention, relief and recovery. And then, of course, the link to SDGs also was made. And that, that was the disarmament development, old disarmament development linkage, then uh, uh, updated and linked to SDGs and also including the climate change, uh, environment, everything brought together. Now, challenges remain in the voice participation and leadership of women in disarmament in agenda setting. As you said, we need to make sure that not only are we are at the table, 
but shape of the table and what is on the menu and what is decided. Uh, but perhaps mirroring the challenges for nuclear and WMD disarmament and WPS agendas more broadly, there's continued low representation of women, especially in nuclear disarmament forums, averaging 20 to 35%, and 25% women reps and heads of delegations in the first committee. Women remain grossly underrepresented in many weapons-related fields, especially nuclear, including technical arms control, and only 12% of ministers of defense globally are women. So of the 10 Security Council resolutions on women, peace, and security, the issue is addressed only on, uh, with a focus on uh, small arms and light weapons and the arms trade treaty, not so much on the WNDs and nuclear. In annual debates at the Security Council on these resolutions, fewer than 15 percent uh, of the states refer to arms control or disarmament. The women's movement are no longer, as I mentioned earlier, alas, the engines of the disarmament peace movement. So we need to change that through targeted and special measures to promote intensive research by women about women's role and, and women's needs and concerns in this whole context on gender dimensions of WMD, foster technical expertise, participation among women in all areas of WMD nuclear and disarmament related technical forums, negotiations, verifications, monitoring, incentivize leadership in political and security decision making, and support women's groups as disarmament advocacy engines and constituencies. This is very important, constituencies and engines. These are the two key roles that women's uh, groups have uh, and have had and must now, that must be brought back. Most of all, we need to change the mindsets of men. It is for, as, as the charter says, it is in the minds of men. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that defenses of peace must be constructed. And who better than women to construct the structures of disarmament for peace and to reignite a global movement, so uh, solidarity, scholarship, advocacy, and political will, most of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Puri. Uh, you raised a whole, shall I say, a whole spectrum of uh, questions and also made very, very concrete suggestions on the ways forward as far as women's engagement in this uh, hitherto untenanted space, untenanted by them, uh, should really evoke. But more in interestingly, your paper is also on biosecurity, which is something that is not normally addressed uh, and it's a it, it's a fascinating take on how we should be looking at that also in the context of women and disarmament. Um, I've really never read anything quite so eloquent on that uh, issue by by women scholars. Um, of course, the WPS agenda has now trans transformed, or shall I say, transmuted into the gender peace and security agenda, where we are not homogenizing women anymore. We are not looking at them as one undifferentiated mass. We are sensitive to the intersectionalities of how caste, class, uh, race, and so on uh, mediate uh, the, the role of women. And I'm particularly reminded about Ambassador Mehta's uh, comment in her paper that women at, at the UN, women diplomats at the UN, invariably, like all diplomats, uh, f present their co government's points of view. So you will have to be sensitive to the fact of the location of the particular women actor in that context. So it's important to see whether who is negotiating. Is it the diplomats or the non-diplomats who are negotiating, rather than is it the man or the woman? Which is why gender, the whole s gender spectrum, becomes a much more, shall I say, um, valent term, uh, a much more weighty term, because it looks at the whole spectrum 
uh, rather than conflating uh, women with gender. And I think this is something that very often uh, gets sort of uh, sidelined, that gender does not equal women, but it's the patterns and structures of power and decision making that operate and whose power, whose voice uh, gets heard and whose gets left out. And uh, so that, that was something. So we do not essentialize women in the WPS agenda. It is now moving, am I right, Rita, into the GPS agenda, which you have written so extensively on. But thank you very, very much uh, for those very wise, insightful uh, comments, presentations, which come from rich experience. We are not privileged to be in that space where the actual negotiations are <coughs> happening. And I would say that much of civil society tends to reify that space, fetishize it in ways, and, and, and doesn't try to comprehend the limits of the space. The other aspect is also the limits on women who are in the foreign, in the, in the security space is important. And as you said, data would reveal that, and a lot of research still needs to be done. But we are running late, uh, tru truly Indian in that sense. But there was so much food, of food for thought around the table. May I request that we take a short bre tea break for 10 minutes and get back here in at 10.25, 11.25. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.